Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be a word that's going to be shared, that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to welcome everybody to our online audience and uh, worshipers and fellowshippers in the body of Christ. We thank God for you, Spirit of Fire Nation. We love you, appreciate you so much. Thank God for you. We're praying for you um, day and night. I'm telling you, intercession is going forth for you all continuously. For all of our first timers, if this is your very first time tuning in, we just want to welcome everybody today. We just want to love on you, tell you how much we appreciate you. There could be many other platforms that you're on, but you're here today. So listen, stay tuned in. Stay tuned in. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Listen, I believe there's going to be a word that's going to be shared that's going to bless your life, that's going to encourage you, that's going to strengthen you. God is going to answer questions for you today. I truly believe that. And so there's a reason why you're here. All right, everybody, go ahead. Share this with as many people as you can. Share it on your social media platforms and call, call the people in because God is going to answer some questions for them today. I truly believe it. And so even as we're dealing with some things, we're going to talk about the role of the wilderness. What is it that you've been going through? Why have you been going through it? What is it that God is trying to bring out of you? And I believe that there's going to be a word, a prophetic word that's going to be released, that's going to be shared, that's going to bless your life. It's going to bless your socks off. So come on. I believe things are going to, I'm telling you, transformation is taking place. God is changing and rearranging things. And listen, I'm on the, I'm on the war path with Satan. And so listen, he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Or the Amplified says, in abundance to the full till it overflows. So let's get ready to get into this thing today. Tell us, look, go ahead, get your coffee, get your juice, whatever. Hurry up, sit down, get your pen and your pads ready to write down what God is speaking to you. I truly believe there's going to be something that's going to bless your life. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you right now for signs, wonders, and miracles that shall take place in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your glory being revealed. We covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you for growth. We thank you for clarity. We thank you, Father, that we're wise master builders, and we speak well, and I speak well over this ministry. I speak well over the people. I speak exponential growth and increase. I declare and decree right now that we are growing by leaps and bounds, making tremendous impact, not only locally, but also globally. And so we give you praise in advance for it now. I thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles will be wrought in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that healings will begin to take place. I rebuke sickness and disease. I come against bitterness. I come against the bitterness of souls that people have been holding on to things and have been refusing to for forgive and let things go. We declare right now that the love of God that's been shed abroad in our hearts is causing us to let those things go. And we choose right now to forgive anyone that's done any hurt, harm, damage, or de destruction in our lives in any way, shape, fashion, or form. We make a decision to forgive now and to let it go. And so, Father, I thank you right now I thank you right now. Some of you need to right now, let it go as an act of your will, as an act of your faith. You need to let it go now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Somebody saying, but it's too hard. It's too hard. The memory, the pain of it is too hard. God says you have authority over that thing and you can cast that image down and command it to leave your mind and begin to declare, I choose to forgive that person and call their name out and begin to speak well over them and begin to bless them and to begin to pray for them and watch God transform and turn things around. So Father, right now, in the name of the almighty Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for divine healing and restoration. We thank you, Father, not just restoring to back which once was, but restoring it to the place it should have been always. 
And so we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor for it now. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. This is going to be a good one today. This is going to be a time of impartation, a time of growth. I'm flowing with the Holy Spirit. He's going to begin to share some things. There's some things I got in my notes, but I know it's some stuff that he wants to drop in you. He wants to get in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of you have been trying to figure out, God, why am I been going through this thing? What has been happening? When is this thing going to turn around? When is this thing? When am I going to come out of this season that I'm in? And I believe God is going to answer some stuff for you today. We've been dealing with the role. We've been talking about the triple threat. Or in other words, we've been dealing with the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But I want to close this thing out today because I told you in the beginning I was going to talk to you about the role of the wilderness. And so I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about what's the role of the wilderness, that, that wilderness season that you feel like you've been in. And so God is like, the questions have been there. God, how long? God, why am I dealing with this? God, when is this thing going to break through? When am I going to see what it is I've been praying and believing for? And so I want to give you the end from the beginning. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and say it. God is going to give you exit strategies. He's going to show you exactly what to do to transform and to change this thing. But when we first see something here, I want to, I want to show something to you. When you don't know or understand the purpose of a thing, then abuse is inevitable. When you don't know or understand the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable. And if you don't know why you're going through a thing, then you will never maximize it or grow from it. If you don't know why, if you don't know why, some wilderness seasons are self-imposed. Some things have been spirit led. And so we want to identify those things. And you're going to have to make that conclusion, come to that conclusion as to God. Was I led to, 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 to go through this thing? Was it a thing where because of bad choices or decisions that I made that caused me to be here? And so whatever you know you can rectify, you need to rectify. But whatever it is God wants to bring out of you with this thing, he's going to bring it out of you. And when it's all said and done, you're going to come out of it like pure gold. You're going to come out of it without the smell of smoke on you. What do I mean by that? With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put in the fiery furnace. And when they came out, when Jesus delivered them out of that thing, they came out without the smell of smoke. In other words, there was no residue of what they had gone through upon them. It had been like they never went through it, but they came out purified. They came out delivered and set free. And so people are going to see you and say, I can't even believe that you went through what you said, what your testimony is, because you look so much better than what you went through. You sound better than what you went through. You acting better than what you went through. And what you went through did, did not contaminate you and cause you to be like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And they said it was better for us to stay in Egypt and to stay in slavery than to walk in freedom. And so I'm telling you now, you are walking in your freedom. You are walking in victory and you're going to learn what it's like to be free and to stay free from this day forward in Jesus name. I need somebody to say amen with me right now. You need to type in amen. You need to type in so be it. You need to type in glory to God. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I want to just say some stuff, but I'm, I was like, man, there's so much running through me. It's so much running through me. It's so much running through me. Spirit of Fire Fellowship, God is taking us through something. God is bringing us into another season and another place. There were things that were once was, but God says I'm doing something new and I'm doing something different. And this time around, when you begin to come back together, as we come back together as a group, when we come back together as a fellowship, when we come back together physically as an entity, there will be the power of God released and there will be new growth. There will be the shedding of old, but there will be the springing forth of the new. And God is saying, I'm bringing new individuals. I'm bringing fresh perspectives. I'm bringing people that's going to usher in my power and my presence. 
So y'all need to be ready. It's not going to be the way that it was in the beginning. And God says it's going to be better than it ever was before. And so listen, you better go ahead and get, get reconnected and get yourself. This is going to be the time you got to say, okay, God, this is it. We're going to be all in with this thing and we're going to believe God together. And in the name of Jesus, God is going to bring the sick. He's going to bring the maimed. He's going to bring the depressed and they're going to be healed, set free and delivered in the name of Jesus. Along with that, some of you like, I need some of that for myself. God says, don't worry, Zion, I'm about to beautify you because you're going to learn what you've been going through and you're not going to make those same mistakes of the past. I am breaking cycles, but watch this more so that I'm breaking cycles. You're going to break the cycle because you're going to say enough is enough and I will not go back around that mountain a second time and you're going to make better decisions this time and God is bringing new opportunities and your eyes are about to be open to see the opportunities that have always been there, but your eyes were blinded through what you were going through. I'm telling you, Satan released weapons of mass distraction in your life, but God is saying this, I'm wiping it all out and you're going to see clearer than you've ever seen before. You're going to hear sharper than you've ever heard before. And there will be great clarity and there will be a, a tremendous focus and there will be great strategy sessions for you have released these things in the spirit, says the Lord. And now I've heard your cries and I've heard your prayers and I've released the strategies in the earth to you. And you're going to hear, see, and know, and you're going to begin to walk these things out in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Whew. Okay. Okay. Ah, glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all like, I mean, I like this. Yeah. You sensing it. You sensing it. You, you sense the power in the presence of God. Yeah, some of you are like, I like this pastor. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm a new man. I'm a different man. My wife, we different people. Glory to God. Yeah, this is a time. This, this is, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, glory to God. I sense it all over me. There is new leadership. There is new leadership that's arisen. Whenever God wants to change an organization, he changes the leadership. Whether they be removed or whether their mind be renewed or changed, they, change has to take place. And so if you want something different, you got to do something different. And to do something different, you got to believe different. And to believe different, you got to think different. And to go to another level, you got to eat at another level. We're eating where kings and priests eat. Glory to God. We are seated together in high places. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Where the righteous reign and the city rejoices. I'm telling you right now, in Jesus, I feel my help coming on. I feel my preaching robe coming on now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be people that will try to mock and says, yes, you said that before, but I said, sit yourself there and watch my God this time. Watch what the great and mighty Jehovah is going to do in front of you. He's going to watch this. Don't become my enemy because that means he's going to make a table in front of you so he can show you what he's going to do with us. And he's going to show you what he's going to do with your life. People better be mindful how they treat you because I'm telling you, if they connect with you right, the blessing that's on you is going to be a reverse tug and it's going to pull them up to where you are. I'm telling you now, in Jesus' name, I'm, you better hear me. You better hear me, glory to God. I keep hearing this person. Sister Kelly, the Lord just spoke to me and he says this, God is bringing you up and out. You have been listening, you have been hearing, and you have been receiving. And God is saying this, I've heard what you prayed behind closed doors. I've seen the things that you brought before me. And he says, watch this, when nobody else was around you, I heard you. I've seen when you cried yourself to sleep at night at times, wondering, God, how am I going to do this? God says this, I'm going to beautify every area. There is about to be tremendous deliverance in your life, great freedom in your life. God is dealing with you about your self-esteem, about your purpose. And God is saying this, when the time is right, when the time is right, he's coming there. When the time is right, I'm going to connect you with everybody. When the time is right, he says, this has been your wilderness. In other words, it's been a time of isolation where God is working on you and you've been trying to figure out why don't you fit in with the people you used to fit in with. God says there is a supernatural authority and power being released and you need to receive it now. Yup, tears are coming down your eyes and God is saying you are receiving this thing and this thing is mighty in my sight, says the Lord, and there will be great rejoicing. And he says, you're going to testify of the goodness of the Lord and great people, many people will rejoice with you. Don't you dare worry about haters. 
Don't you dare worry about people say you being funny now because who, what's happening to you? What you doing? You talking different. You thinking different. You acting different. That's right, because your mind is being renewed and transformed and changed. And the hand of God is coming upon you. You better hear me when I say this. The hand of God is coming upon you. When the hand of God comes upon you, discipline begins to come upon you. There is a tremendous drive and unction from the inside for you to begin to change things around you. And God is saying now, this thing too will come to pass in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Now receive that word. Receive that word. I got out everything I needed to get out. Receive that word. Hallelujah. Now watch this. We're going to talk about a little bit more this role of the wilderness. In other words, this wilderness season that Jesus went through, by definition, the word wilderness, it means a secluded place. It means an isolated place. So what happened was the Holy Spirit led Jesus into a place of isolation for him to be tempted 40 days and nights. And so during this temptation, Jesus had to endure constant harassment from Satan. But now watch this. He went in full of the Holy Ghost. So he went in full of power to resist the temptations that were coming. And then the Bible ends up saying in the last verse, in verse, I think it's verse 13 or 14, it says, and yeah, yeah, verse 14, it says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. So Jesus came back in the power of the spirit. But then he says this, it says this, it says the fame of him went about all. And so when he walks in this power, this power produced the fame. Now he wasn't seeking the fame, but in other words, he was seeking to do the will of his father. And while he was doing the will of his father, then all of a sudden now a fame of him went about all, went about. And this is a time that God is, has isolated many people to develop in them this thing that he's going to release them. In other words, your wilderness is about to produce your promotion if you handle it right. Because now what we're going to do is this. I want to show you now um, what, what some of the reasons why this, this, this wilderness took place where Jesus was concerned. Number one, number one, let me, let me deal with this. Let me deal with this. Because so th this happens in the life of any leader. When God is developing your leadership ability in you, there are things that begin to take place. And so when Jesus was led by the spirit in the wilderness, see, that was spirit led. That was a spirit led time. There are things that God will allow at times. It didn't mean he caused it, but it meant he allowed it. See, the spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and nights. Watch this, where he was tempted 40 days and nights of Satan. Satan was the tempter. God allowed Jesus to go. The Father allowed him. The Spirit led him into that place, that place of isolation. In other words, to be proven and to be tried before he was released to the public. There are some things that God is getting out of you and getting in you in this time of isolation. So when he wants you to be revealed to the world that now you come out as pure gold, you come out strengthened enough, sharpened enough with enough character, enough development to now feed the people you call to go to. So God is saying this, don't now, don't, don't, don't cancel out this wilderness, but learn why you're going through it. Learn what you need to learn from it and watch God bring you out in the power of the spirit. So number one reason, this is one of the reasons why God allows wilderness seasons or causes or allows us to go through these wilderness seasons. Number one, we recognize that God will lead us into seasons of growth and not necessarily gratification. Seasons of growth, in other words, not necessarily gratification. There's a time where you, he is developing in you a resolve to know how to endure and overcome situations. I was, I was talking to um, some guys about walking in love. And when you look at the description of love in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, in the Amplified Version, the first thing that it says that love endures long is patient. Now, patience is not just putting up with, but patience is a consistency and a constancy that you have in a situation so that you're not easily moved by what you're going through. See, sometimes some people ain't been through nothing. So at the first sign of trouble, they break. At the first sign of anything happening, they just crumble under pressure. And so when temptation comes, 
Temptation is pressure applied to your mental faculties to get you to do something that is out of alignment with the will of God, with the word of God. And so what we have to learn how to endure temptation, how to overcome temptation. God told us he always gives us a way out of escape out of temptation. And we need to learn how to now cast down images that now come and exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And so we bring it into captivity by declaring and speaking over it and capturing that thought. And sometimes some of you are like, why am I still dealing with this same thing? It's because you haven't learned how to overcome it just yet. And you haven't exercised your authority consistently because one minute you good, next minute you're not. What God wants to breed is consistency in your character and in your life so that you can handle new rooms he's about to bring you into. And so we, we always heard it like this, new levels, new devils. See, when God raises you up, there's more, you're more prone to attacks when you're more visible. And see, what you become, oh, glory. What God is causing you to become effective in is going to bring promotion. And he's bringing you out of obscurity which means you're more susceptible to attacks from individuals and people. So you got to be ready to handle criticisms, persecutions that come for the word's sake to try to rob you of your credibility. That's what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to rob you of your credibility so nobody will listen to you because you can have wisdom to save a city, but if it don't look like it's working for you, why would people listen to you? And so what God is saying is there are certain things I'm keeping you behind closed doors because I'm developing you and how to walk in consistency in my word and to now produce fruit and that your fruit remains so that people now will listen to you. I think there's a scripture that talks about a poor man can have wisdom to save a city, but nobody will listen to that poor man. Why? Because he broke. It's almost like, well, if it ain't working for you, why should I listen to you? The word is still true. The wisdom is still correct and true. And sometimes what's happening is, oh man, you are earning your voice to be heard. What, what do I mean by that? There are things, okay, there are some things that one person can say and another person can say the same thing. But one person says it in his revelation. Another person says it in his heresy. The only difference is, it's the vehicle through which the revelation is coming through and how people are viewing that person. One person has earned the right to be heard because of the things that they've gone through, things that they have accomplished. So people will listen to them greater than the one that has not even proven it because to them, it's still theory. But to the one who's now applied, it is no longer theory. They see that the proof in the pudding is the eating of it. And that's why God says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, that you got to take this recipe of the word. You got to go into the kitchen of your life and you got to bake that cake and come out with signs following saying this is what the Lord has done as I've operated in his word, operated in his principles. And now I see this thing coming to pass. The greatest thing that Satan will try to bring, the greatest deception, the greatest fear is that God's word won't work. So now he'll try to get you to come off of it. Number two, reasons for seasons of, of, of wilderness seasons. We fight battles and overcome temptations to take shortcuts. <laughs> this, this is important. In such a get, like, get rich quick scheme society, everything quick, fast, in a hurry. There's some things, some people ain't battle tested. Sometimes you got folk, man, you ain't been through much of nothing in the sense of, and I don't want to diminish any person's uh, wilderness, any person's temptation, any person's situation. There's some people that's like, okay, you crumble under pressure so easy. You got to learn how to be strengthened through adversity. That this is a reason why you in the workout room of life. And some things you got to, I understand, sometimes you cry. And I get all of that, but it comes to a point you got to stop crying about that same situation. And you got to have enough strength and resolve where you fed up with being bullied by the enemy emotionally. And you stand up and say, I am not going to let you wreck my life, wreck my mind, wreck my emotions any longer. 
it's time for you to put your big boy drawers and big girl panties on and say, okay, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I refuse to allow you, Satan, to keep harassing me in my thought life. You will not harass my family. You will not harass. Listen, I'm telling you, I've already seen this. I done gone into warfare some things and I'm seeing the hand of God work. And I'm just sitting back and saying, "Mm mm-hmm, go ahead, Lord. All right, I see it. I see it. Glory to God. I refuse to sit back. I refuse to worry about anything. I refuse to be harassed by mistakes of the past. And God even prophesied to me. This man of God prophesied to me years ago when I was 16 that the enemy will try to bring up mistakes of the past, but I'm gonna allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth. And doggone it, if I have not seen that happen, well, he will try to bring regret. And some of you, that's the biggest thing he'll bring is regret. The the thought of regret, wishing you would have done things different, wishing you would have made decisions better in the past. But God is saying you can make new decisions from here and I can still get you to where I've been wanting for you to be if you just listen to me. The reason you've been stagnant is because you've been hounded by mistakes of the past. And I'm telling you that God is bringing you up out of that in the name of Jesus. And I come against every hounding devil from the pit of hell that has tried to harass you. It's tried to make you feel unworthy try to make you feel disqualified. God has already qualified you for it because when he created you for it, he qualified you for it. And what he's doing is he's saying this, I have this thing tailor made for you. It is already fit for you. And what I'm doing is squeezing you in the shape to fit the outfit that I already created for you. I'm telling you to cast every weight aside, every sin and the weight that does so easily beset you. That's why you can't fit the outfit because you're too overweight with what the pressures of what you're dealing with. That's why you feel like spiritually, God said you losing the weight now. This is a season you becoming spiritually fit, emotionally fit to handle what I told you to do. And now it's going to bring great joy in Jesus name. God says I brought you through it. Mm, mm, mm. I brought you into it to bring you through it. And so now when you coming out of it, you coming out in the power of the spirit, you coming out as pure gold and watch this. You're going to be stronger than you ever been before. Watch this. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be tough, but still tender. Come on, Michael, you better come on. Now watch this. What do I mean by that? You're not going to be bitter, but you're going to be better. You're going to be toughened through the adversity where now you can still be sensitive enough to minister to the needs of the people that God bringing you to and through. Now I'm telling you, because what was happening was you were so rejected by who left you that you now still had the hurt and the bitterness. But God is saying, now I am bringing a healing that even the thought of that person will no longer hound you or hinder you. And I'm telling you now, this is a new season for you, baby. You might as well go ahead and rejoice in it now. Forget the fact that you failed at this, that, or the other. Uh Uh-uh, you just learned from it. God says, I'm bringing you to something greater than the degree would have gotten you. I'm going to take you to a place that only my glory could do. And I'm telling you now that it is when it's all said and done, that all will work out well for you in Jesus name. Glory to God. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Now watch this. (laughs) See, it's, it's the battle to overcome temptations to take shortcuts. Sometimes we want to come out of it so quick that we don't do what God told us to do. There's still some things that he told you to do two years ago. You still got to get it done. You still got to get it done. So no matter how much you don't want to do it, he says that's still the path where you got to go through to get it done. Because there's things you got to learn to do what I told you to do. There are things you got to pick up. You got to pick it up. Number three, (laughs) in the wilderness, we learn, we learn discipline, and the art of depending on God. In that wilderness season, that's when you trust God. You, man, I'm telling you, we know what that, oh Lord, it's like <laughs> you got to work your faith and you got to learn how to rest and you got to know how to be, watch this, content but not complacent. Contentment, the Bible says, with godliness is great gain. In other words, having the right attitude at whatever season that you're currently in and whatever level you're currently in. So it's still rejoicing, even though you might be in apartment level, but God is bringing you to home ownership 
that you can say, okay, even as I'm going through the process of going from this level to that level, I'm still going to have to make sure that I keep an attitude of joy and gratitude and thankfulness, thankful that I have a place to stay, thankful that I have a job, even though you might not like it, but it's still income that's coming in. And God has still graced you to develop that, to bring that in. But now say, okay, God, in the midst of this, I need to discipline myself to get to the new season and new place in my life. So it's going to take great discipline. It's going to take times of just like for athletes, you got to have, see, you got to work when ain't nobody watching, practicing. You got to study when nobody's watching. See, for people, you got to do things behind the scenes that you're developing yourself in because preparation time, you got to remember this, hear this, preparation time is never lost time. Preparation time is never lost time. Preparation time is never lost time. But I've been preparing for 20 some years. Okay. So when it's time for you to be released, you're going to take off like a rocket. And this is going to watch this and you're going to be able to handle the growth. Of, watch this. You're going to handle the growth. You're going to handle. Okay. Let me just speak this. I'm seeing people as I'm preaching. Sister Jackie, the Lord says you're about to scale up. You need to be ready for growth. You need to be ready for growth. You need to be ready for growth. And it's almost like scale for growth. Whatever he's telling you, you better be ready to grow. And yeah, it'll be a fear that tries to hold back or that apprehension of, Lord, what in the world? I didn't know it was going to be like this and it's going to happen like this. He says, I'm going to turn everything around for your good. Everything around for your good. So don't you dare be concerned about anything. For I got everything covered. I got everything covered, says the Lord. So don't you dare worry about it. All right, let's go back. Number four. All right, I want to hear it because I got seven things I want to deal with this. Got about 10 minutes left. Now watch this. Number four. In this wilderness time, you are broken. We are broken of self-sufficiency and self-promotion. Of self-sufficiency and self-promotion. That it goes back into learning how to trust and depend on God. But really what this is, is your motives are purified in wilderness time. Your motives are purified. Why do you want what you've been going after? Why do you want what you've really been believing for? Have your motives really been in alignment with God's way and his word and his will? You learn things about yourself. You begin to say, you know what? I, desire, I still like those things, desire certain things, but now that doesn't impress me as much as it used to. Okay, God, I get back to the very root foundation of those things. It's like when Solomon, when he offered a thousand burnt offerings unto God, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night and says, what, can, what should I do for thee? What can I do for thee? He asked for a discerning heart, wisdom, and a discerning spirit to govern the people. because So he put them first. He wanted to make sure that the kingdom was well. He says, because you didn't ask for wealth or riches or all this prominence, he says, I'm going to give you what you asked, but give you even what you didn't ask for. Because I know your motivation is right. You're not seeking after the money and the promotion and the prominence, but you, really your heart is to serve the people. Pastor Dollar, I just heard a message from him teaching on servanthood, the pathway to success. And one of the things is Jesus said to be the greatest, you got to be servant of all. So you got to have a servanthood mentality. And a lot of times what happens is you don't seek to be served, but you seek to serve. Your motives are purified. When your motives are purified, God can trust you now with greater. Because you won't use, see, you won't use people to get things, but you'll use things to bless people. You see what I'm saying? So the motives are purified during this time. Number five, number five, you are solidified with your sense of mission. In other words, you're solidified with purpose is concerned. You begin to shed off things. You begin to see what you are good at, what you're not good at, what you do like, what you don't like. And all of a sudden, even during this time, there's clarity of direction because it forces you to sit in the seat God. And so now when you come out of this, you're going to come out with a clearer sense of purpose and direction. And then number six, we gain perspective. All of this is still tied in together. There's a perspective of, you know what, you know, it's like people that go after this success, but at the expense of their family. 
you realize that most people say, you know, you hear people say all the time when people are on their deathbed, they're not thinking about how many houses they got, how many cars they got. They think about their loved ones. They think about the things that spending time with loved ones and things of that nature. And it's like the things that really matter in life. It's not that God doesn't want you to have the other stuff. He just doesn't want it out of sequential order. He doesn't want it to be the priority for your life. He wants you to put first things first. And when you have that well-balanced life, when you get that gain, that perspective of life, of what God called you to do, the things that matter, then God says, I can trust you with more. Lastly, the wilderness prepares us to enter into our calling. When Jesus, see, this was the temptation process Jesus went through before he was released for public ministry. He endured the temptation, he overcame the temptation, and he came out in the power of the Spirit. You got to understand this intense, now dealing with time frame wise, 40 days in this, you know, compared to 30 years of ministry or 33. Now watch this. Jesus prepared 30 years for three years of ministry. And this was the beginning of that three years. But what are three years? He changed the world. In three years. But this was the beginning of that worldwide ministry. This intense scrutiny from the enemy to tempt him in these three major areas, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. When you go through stuff, it'll knock the pride out of you. And it'll come to a point like, you know what? I'm tired of trying to save face. I need help. When you get to that place and sometimes getting help from the person that you don't want it from the most is one of the greatest humbling experiences. If God could use a donkey, and I want to say it another way, but God wanted to use a donkey to speak to his servant, God will use whoever he want to use to get answers to you. And you can't choose who he uses to get it through to you. There may be somebody that he wants you to get it a certain way because they made themselves available. And the one you're trying to go to ain't made themselves available. And so you just got to get it from who you can get it from. And that's what's been happening. It's like there's a hunger. And people are hungry for purpose. That's really what it is. You are hungry to manifest who you are and who you've been created to be. It's like, man, this is, oh, Lord, you, I'm talking about. God wants to, huh, he wants to enhance you psychologically, intellectually, and spiritually. He wants you to see the full coming together of who he created you to be, spirit, soul, and body. Man, I'm telling you, Sometimes we were so we we would make the statement, you so spiritual, you know, natural good. But sometimes people make statements, but we got to clarify what we're talking about. We have to understand that, okay, because some people think they they the world talks about enhancing the mind. The church usually talks about enhancing the spirit. But you know you can enhance both along with the physical body. So to be intellectual is to not, not be spiritual. And then sometimes what happens is, that's why to the, nat to the natural man, the things of the spirit are foolishness. That's why we got to renew our minds to the word of God. Our minds are just like a computer. It only produces what it's fed. Man, you better hear me. But it's designed to mass produce what it's fed. Okay, okay, can I, can I come help me hold the ghost to say it even better? Whew, the power of the mind connected to the power of the spirit is supposed to cause us to walk at such a high level of creativity, ingenuity. I mean, our mind is like a supercomputer. And what God wants to do is to unlock everything 
to get back to where the, at the garden in the beginning. And I'm telling you, where Adam called, he watch this, he called the animals by name. And whatever he called it was the name thereof, but the description thereof. This is why I call, what you call yourself is so important. God changed Abram's name to Abraham. In other words, that, that, that Hebrew, I'm telling you, he put God put his name in Abram's name to transform him into what he had already called him, the father of many nations, the father of many ethnos, ethnicities. Oh, Lord, okay, I, I don't want to get beyond you. I'm, I'm telling you, but I got I to gotta start speaking this stuff. Because whatever you call, that's why it's important what you answer to and what you call yourself and who you call yourself and what you call the situation. I call it blessed. I call spirit of fire blessed. I call every member blessed. I call every person in alignment and in unity and I rebuke any devil that will try to disrupt the harmony and the unity of this fellowship. And that will try to now woo away anybody that God called to be here because Satan is trying to get them out of purpose. And I cancel it now and I cut it off now in Jesus name. And I'm right on time. Ha <laughs> ha, glory to God. Glory to God. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm telling you, God is good. I finished right on time. <laughs> God is good. This is it. Whatever. Whatever. This is that. Spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that. This is that. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Signs and wonders and science and technology. Miracles and signs and education. I'm telling you. People being raised up. People being removed. People being exposed. It is coming to pass. The church is being glorified. This end time harvest. The church is being glorified. The church is being glorified. Yeah. Jesus being glorified. The church being edified. Remember, he even said, for our glory, these things are revealed and brought to us. We pray out these things. We pray out these mysteries, these divine secrets. Hallelujah. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. We give you praise. Now, there may be somebody logged in today that's never made Jesus the Lord of your life. But, hey, this is your opportunity. Some of you have heard this. Some of you may have just peeped in to see what's going on. But well, all of a sudden, you were captured. And I'm telling you now, God brought you here for a reason. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you're not absolutely positively sure that if you were to die today, that you make it to heaven, there is a no soul salvation, y'all. Some of you have been struggling with your salvation. What do I mean? You know, in your thought life, am I born again? Will I make it to heaven? The Bible declares this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. In other words, when you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he died and was raised from the dead for your sin, he says you believe unto righteousness or right standing with God. It's your belief and your faith in what Jesus has done that has made you righteous before God. Not, you, not your own works, not your goody-goody works, your not smoking, not drinking, or not cussing, or not sleeping around. And so what we try to do is enforce moral behavior to be right with God well, he says this, your faith in Christ is what makes you right with God. Now that you're the righteousness of God, you awaken to that righteousness and now you're, you won't sin. You won't miss the mark. You do the right things and all of those things, but it's born out of who you are, not trying to become. You hear me? So now I want you to do this. I want you to pray this prayer of faith with me. Just simply say this, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were raised from the dead to justify me, to make me right with God. Thank you. I accept it. 
and I receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's that simple. It's that simple. Well, I didn't say it exactly the way that I always said the confession of faith. Hey, the whole thing is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God, raise him from the dead. That's how you know you're saved. Whether it's said the exact same way every single time with this person or that person, the whole thing is acknowledgement, confession of it, and acceptance of it. Praise God. Now, there's, I want you to pray this as well. Because there, there's, there's a experience subsequent to salvation called the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. There's power received in your life. I mean, this Bible, this, the Bible describes it as dunamis, dynamite power, explosive power. This is the third person of the Godhead. We have God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one. The Holy Spirit is here with us in the earth today, and he's here to come and to dwell in you, to assist you and to help you live an overcoming life. I want you to pray. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. Yeah, yeah, that's you. Lift up your hands. Say, I receive you, Holy Spirit. Come inside me now. Live in me. Dwell in me. Say this. Say, I now have the ability to speak with other tongues. As you give me the utterance, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I just want you to begin this. Come on. Let's begin. Open up your mouth. Begin. Let's begin to pray together. All right. Out of your belly. He's going to help you to pray. He's helping you to pray. He's assisting you to pray. He's giving you the utterance, but you do the talking. He's not going to make you talk. You do the talking. He assists and helps you. What this does when you pray like this, it helps you to charge your spirit up. Just like if you, you charge a battery, charge your phone up that sometimes you feel low in life, you feel drained. But now when you pray in the spirit, watch this, praying in the spirit will charge you up, charge your, your spirit up like a battery and make you feel alive again. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit would also quicken your mortal body. In other words, make you alive, make you feel energized and strengthened. Praise God. Now I want you to pray like this every single day. Spend time, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep increasing. The more you pray like this, the Bible also says you release wisdom. If you don't know how to pray for things in your understanding, you can go and pray in the spirit. We've got many teachings on this so far as what the benefits of now praying in the spirit. And so what we want you to do is we want you to connect with us. If you got born again, you got filled with the Holy Spirit. And listen, we also want to give you the opportunity to join this local fellowship. It's a local and global fellowship. So whether you're in another state, another country, you can be an e-church member. You can connect with us. We will have one of our connecting staff reach out to you. We want to connect with you. And so if that's you, you say, hey, I want to be a part of this ministry. I want you to do this. I want you to go ahead and send us a message at connect at spiritoffire.us, connect at spiritoffire.us. You can email us. You can message us on our social media platforms. Let us know. We will have someone from our Connect team get in touch with you to let you know how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive, how to connect. You know what? If you want to learn more about this life in Christ, connect with us. We will help you. We will help you. We are working on getting more content um, created and out there on our social media platforms, on our YouTube channel, on our website. You can go to our website to connect with us, find out more about the ministry at spiritoffire.us. We still is currently under some renovations where we're adding things to it constantly and we're enhancing it for, your, um, for the best experience possible for you. And so we want you to go ahead. Listen, be patient with us, but we're going to get you. We're going to get you the answers. We're going to help you out. If that's you and you've been searching for answers, we want to connect with you. Praise God. Now, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. We call it opportunity for prosperity. Whereas we sow and as we give, listen, we don't come empty handed when we come to worship God. We worship him with our lives. We worship God with our time, our talent and our treasure. 
In other words, our time spent in his presence to hear his word, our talent in servanthood, where we use the gifts, talents, and abilities that he's given us to advance his kingdom, to get things done in the earth, to serve people, and then our treasure, to sow, because we understand too that it takes resources to get the job done in the earth. Things, yes, they do cost, but we don't do it to get things from people. We do use these finances and resources to get things to people, to now create the platforms, to now get the best quality product out to people, to help minister to their lives and to be a blessing to them, to help where his outreach is concerned and to meet the needs of people. You are a part of that. So even as God is leading you now, whatever he's telling you to sow, whatever he's telling you to give. Now we understand the tithe is the tenth. That's already predetermined, 10%. But then anything over and above is what's considered an offering. So whatever God is leading you to do, so. And now I speak increase over you as you give. The Bible says it'll be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He'll give to you. In other words, even that word bosom means the pouch that's been formed. A pouch form can be anything um, any income producing entity, anything that God can use to funnel resources to you, to get things to you, whether you got a business in your, on your job, whatever it is that's been formed, that's been created to now receive what it is he wants to release. Think about this. If you give them more, if you create more to receive and then you sow, you create more, you create more to receive. In other words, if you create more funnels, income producing entities and streams and multiple streams of income, then there's more he can funnel to you so that now watch this blessed to be a blessing to all families of the earth have been blessed. Not only that, he wants to bless you. He wants to increase you more and more. He wants you to be able to enjoy life. So whatever God is leading you to do, sow it in faith, believe it. So we declare that all is well with you. So there's some, uh, is there some information coming up on the screen? Um, as to how you can sow, different ways you can sow. Uh, it is tax deductible. We are a 501c3. And so we just thank God for your continued support in this work that we're doing. Praise God. So y'all, <laughs> hallelujah. We want y'all to be ready because we are still in the process. We're looking we, for, for in-person worship. We want to find the right place um, that's conducive to what it is we want to do and for the vision and for everything. So y'all please continue to keep us in prayer. Keep it before God. We call in. Now, let's, let's do this by faith. I want you to do this with me. This, we used to do this when we used to come together believing for certain things. Usually we'd have a picture of something. We're gonna, I'm going to start doing some things, going back to some things, some old practices we used to do. But one of the things I want you to do this. I know that I can't hear you right now, but there's no distance in the spirit. I want you to declare this with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new facilities, our new facilities paid for. Now, the facilities that fit our needs, wants, and desires, that it comes to us under grace in a perfect way, without stress, struggle, or strain, and we're well able to obtain and maintain in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right, y'all. Well, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message, but I, I pray that you got something out of this today. I encourage you. We love you. Stay focused. Stay on top. I know so much is happening in the world. It's real easy if you stay focused on that stuff to get in fear, but I want you to stay in faith. Don't have fear in running out, but have faith in running over. Declare and decree, money cometh unto me. So no matter how high the gas prices get, I always have more than enough to fill my tank up and to be a blessing to somebody else. Man, this happened to me yesterday. I told my wife this. I was just geeked, geeked about it. It could seem small to other people, but it just blessed me. I was at a, a, at a subway store and uh, I was getting sandwiches for me and my family and stuff. And there was this lady that come in, Caucasian lady, a little older and very nice lady, very nice lady. Just very pleasant, very manable. 
just loving with the people, the staff. She was talking to me and sharing some things. We were just talking. And she had talked about her child who had autism and things. And, and um, while I'm standing there doing my order, I already knew. I just felt it welling up in me. Pay for her food. I said, okay. And so I told the lady at the register, I tried to whisper, but I wasn't whispering well. But it was like I was trying to say it loud enough so she could hear me, but the lady was close enough she could hear what I was saying. And then I turned to the lady and said, I got you. She was like, oh, no, 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 no. I got this coupon that's, um, you know, buy one, get one free. And it, it, no, so I, I'm, I'm good. I was like, no. I said, I want to be a blessing to you. I said, keep it for another time. I said, I'll, I'll bless you. I said, I got it taken care of. She said, listen. I was like, she was like, okay, please just use this. I said, okay, cool. I said, I said, go ahead. She, 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 she gave the coupon to the lady and she scanned it. She said, yeah, it worked. And then the amount that came up, then this was about five sandwiches that I ended up paying for. But uh, the, the amount that she told me was so much less. I was like, you sure that's the right amount? I said, make sure, because I want to make sure that I'm not underpaying you for what, you know, what we're doing. And the lady was like, you know, it, it's, it's good. So I said, like, okay, told the lady, God bless you. She said, bless you, God bless you. And I just happy that I just, I just wanted to be a blessing, just a do good seed. And I was just doing being led by the Spirit of God. Right before I got home, I just got to laughing. Because the thought hit me. Not only, that was a twice sown seed. He said, not only did you bless the lady, but look what happened. She blessed you. Because I wanted to manage the money that I was spending. I wanted to just set a certain amount. I didn't want to overspend or do anything, you know, spend too much money that particular day or whatever. But the Holy Ghost brought it to me. Remember the amount that you ended up paying? That was less than what you would have paid for if you just paid for your food alone. So not only the fact that he led me to ask the woman or to, to just be a blessing to her turned out to be a blessing to me because not because it hit me that the, it was for about one, get one free. So not only was it for her sandwiches, but it was for mine also. And I just burst out laughing. I said, man, you set me up. I said, that is hilarious. I, I just started laughing. The fact that if you wouldn't have even offered to buy her, her food, she wouldn't have used what she had to help you at the same time. I said, man, you better hear. I was like, I'm thinking, you know, because sometimes when we're in that blessing mode, you know, we, we think we're doing something. But at the same time, God was setting me up because it not only took care of her, but it took care of what I wanted to accomplish as well. But I just went on and spent the money because I was just going to go ahead and do it. But it was like, you know what? Now I save money. Still got seed in the ground. Remember, I'll minister seed to the sower. But watch this. And your bread for eating. And will multiply your resources for giving. So not only did, was, did I have the seed to sow, but now he provided bread for eating, reduced the cost. You better hear me. I know it seemed like a small thing, but God going to do it with bigger purchases. You better get ready. That you don't know why he's telling you to do it, but he's setting you up. Because whenever God commands you to sow a seed, he always has a harvest in mind for you. You, you. you better flow with him. So whatever he tells you to do, don't fear releasing the seed. Because not only will he minister seed to you who sows, to the sower, but he'll multiply your resources for giving. And he'll also make sure that you got way more than enough to eat. Whoever that's for, obey what the Lord say do. We speak increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and release. And in faith, release that seed. Tell that seed, go and grow in Jesus' name. And I'll see you real soon. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm done for today. I thank God for y'all showing up. Love you. Send this out. Uh, we're going to have to replay this. You know, send this out and do. <laughs> people need to hear this. They need to be encouraged and need to be strengthened. If you know somebody that could benefit from this message, let them know. Go back and listen to it. Like, girl, go on back. Bro, you better listen to this. No, you need, listen, everybody needs to be strengthened and encouraged. And uh, listen, we're here at Spirit of Fire. We're changing the culture, igniting the passion, living the dream. 
And we declare and decree that the best is yet to come over your life. So I declare right now great favor upon you and your family. And all is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. On behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we love you so much and we appreciate you. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.